What's going on YouTube? Today I'm taking a look at what I think is the most unique and innovative mouse on the market at the moment, the G Wolves HTR. Before I get started, I just want to point out that this is a new camera angle that I'm using, new set, I guess. Definitely let me know in the comments if you like this camera angle or if you think that I should change it in some way. I'm always open to suggestions, so thanks. Anyway, the reason this mouse is so innovative is the fact that it comes with molding putty or clay, which you can directly modify the shape with. Now, before we get into this review, I want to say that I'll be going over this mouse from two different lenses, so to speak, one being the mouse out of the box completely completely stock and the other with the mouse customizations. The reason for this is because as you can tell, this mouse can change a lot depending on what you do to it. I don't think it's fair to only review this mouse with my customizations in mind, because if I give it a great rating, lots of that is coming from what I come up with, not what G-Wolves actually shipped in the box with just the mouse. Anyway, with that in mind, let's go ahead and get into the review. So as you can tell, the G-Wolves HDR is a very tiny and lightweight mouse geared toward fingertip grip users like myself. Here's a comparison between it and the WL Mouse Beast X Mini. You can see that the WL Mouse is quite a bit longer than the G-Wolves, and without any modifications, it's wider as well. It sports a 3395 sensor, Huano switches, and comes in at about 29 grams. It's my first sub 30 gram mouse, and it's honestly pretty insane to play with. But even at that very low weight, it is 8K compatible, and it comes with the dongle out of the box. Looking at the click performance, they are almost perfect for use with fingertip. They aren't too heavy to force mouse movement when you click them, and they aren't too light either. Great job on those. As for the side buttons, I'll be honest, I really didn't consider or use them at all. They are tiny, so if you're doing anything with them that's important like building in fortnite this mouse is really not the one you need i did try it out for a little bit and for the most part it was fine to use them but in the grand scheme of things it's much better if you have a mouse with larger side buttons if you are going to use them in game like in fortnite or something like that the stock skates are by default dot skates which are surprisingly good on cloth they are super rounded which makes them feel smooth as butter during gameplay i also want to mention that they did include in the packaging a lot more dot skates and i think i'm actually going to use these on some other mice because of how good they are on this one maybe it's just because this is super light but I really do like the skates on this mouse. Moving on to the build quality of the mouse, it's actually built like a tank. There's no side flex at all, and the clicks have practically zero post travel or rattling. I'm super impressed by that, and it all makes sense given the fact that this mouse is super duper small. The performance is also incredibly impressive on this mouse. I've been trying lots of 8K mice recently, namely the ATK F1 Ultimate and the WL Mouse Beast X Max. At 8K, they both cause a ton of stutters while playing Fortnite, which tends to struggle with high polling. The HDR, however, barely does it at 8K. I'm not sure if this has to do with the fact that it has a 3395 sensor and not a 3950 like in the F1 and the Beast X Max. It's possible that that could affect it, but regardless, it's a night and day difference. Finally, let's talk about what makes this mouse so unique, the customizability and shape. This is what really matters with this mouse, and like I said, what makes it so unique. G-Wolves initially announced this mouse as just another fingertip shape in their line. G-Wolves is known for really great true fingertip shapes, and so I was really excited for it. They then announced that it comes with putty or clay in the box and how you can make your own shape out of the mouse. And then I was even more excited, and now after spending some time creating my shape, the mouse is incredibly comfortable. I also put some grips around the mouse too, on top of the putty as well, and with all this added, the mouse is for sure an S-tier fingertip option. Sadly though, the mouse with no customizations is just not great for me at all. In fact, it's pretty terrible. It was one of the worst shapes and coatings for me yet. This is because of the cone-like shape that it has. In the back, the mouse is much, much thinner than it is in the front. Because of that, my pinky was way too close to my palm and my hand would almost cramp up while playing with it, and I had no control at all over the mouse. On top of that, the coating is awful on this mouse straight out of the box. My fingers were slipping like crazy and I was missing shots because of it. It honestly was really frustrating using this mouse stock. This is really important to mention because lots of people, and I'd almost say most people, don't want to spend their time figuring out how they can improve a mouse with shape additions and grip tape. Most gamers get their mouse out of the box, plug it in, start playing, and just forget about it. Sometimes I wish that were me, but I am cursed with this hobby, so here I am. There is a lot of merit in that, and I think that probably makes the most sense for most people. I mean, you already spent $150 plus on this mouse, so why should you have to then put time into improving it. Now the flip side has merit too. Anyone can make a shape that they love if they put their mind to it, with a few exceptions obviously, so everyone wins, right? But really what this means is that this mouse is a canvas for enthusiasts, so to speak. If you aren't really into mice and making a shape that's absolutely perfect to you, this mouse is just not worth your time. But if you are like myself and a lot of other people in the community, then it definitely is. I had so much fun figuring out what I liked and what I didn't like with different shapes that I made, and I finally landed on one that is pretty damn good. Regardless, like I said earlier, too much of this mouse is sort of up to interpretation, so I'm going to give it two ratings, one for the mouse right out of the box and one for the Anders version with my customizations. Without any customizations, this mouse is like a 2.5, maybe even a 2.0. Most other mice that I review that aren't good, like the VXE R1SE or the Pulsar X2H, 
I could still main the mouse and feel good about it after a while. The HTR with no mods though is just completely terrible. I can't see myself using it in that state for more than maybe a night, which I think is how long I actually used it for without putting mods on it. But with the customizations, however, with a lot of time spent putting putty in different places, putting grip tape down, I'd say this mouse is like a 4.0. It's really up there with the big boys and joins the coveted group of certified goaded mice. Said this bitch won't roll my weed up. She moved fast like cheetah. Her first smell is brief up. Her best friend named Keisha. Told twin Uzi's call my Nina. The only reason I didn't give it a 4.5 like the OP18K is because the side buttons, like I said, are really just not usable for games that require you to use them a lot. That means if I do want to switch over to build mode in Fortnite, I really don't feel like I can use this mouse well. Maybe with some practice I could get it, but for now I really think that having a mouse with larger side buttons like the WL Mouse Beast X Mini is a much better option. Overall, this mouse is insanely good if you are willing to mess around with it, especially performance wise, but if not, I'm sorry, it's just a really bad and uncomfortable shape and like I said, the coating is just horrible. Anyways, this was a long one, but there was a lot to talk about with this mouse that I wanted to say, but that'll do for the G-Wolves HTR review. Next up on the channel, I have two mice coming in the mail right now that I'm really interested in, the Darmo Shark Fish Head Mouse, the uh, other fingertip mouse that they have. And then I also ordered the Mchos G3, which is the G203 clone, so I'm really looking forward to getting those. I have some other mice that I also haven't covered on the channel yet uh, that I got in the past, so I might do one of those, but we'll see. It'll most likely be one of the two that I ordered that are gonna come in the future. But thanks so much for watching this review, and again, let me know in the comments if you like the new camera angle, and I will See you in the next one. Peace. Hey, we can put little more. I can live lock. She spend a hundred on some new socks.